Hello guys! The Sultan's Ascend new expansion for Age of Empires 4 has been announced at Gamescom and now you can already wishlist it on Steam. In this video I'm not gonna leak something or anything like that, I just want to go through the information that we have already available to us, the pictures and speculate what we can expect. And also from the screenshots we can already check some historical information. So let's get into it! During the Gamescom event, they said that this is the largest expansion ever released for Age of Empires. So let's start by checking what that means. The original game, the Age of Empires 1, has one expansion, the Rise of Rome. And this expansion added four new civilizations, some campaigns, some new units and so on. Now for Age of Empires 2, I had to make a table because there are nine expansion packs and I wanted to have an idea of what's the maximum amount of civ civilizations ever released, maps and so on. And we can see here that the Conquerors is the expansion that added the most number of civilizations in one expansion, with five. And most of them also included some new maps, some new biomes, some new fauna or some new technologies units. So this all comes along and campaigns. And Age of Empires 3 had four expansion packs and the maximum amount of civilizations released in all of them was three, plus maps, technologies, campaigns and so on. Now if they really mean what they said, we should be expecting an expansion with five civs or more or at least, I don't know, 30 maps or new, maybe new biomes as well, new fauna, of course new units, at least like 13 new units. So if they mean what they say, if this is really going to be the largest expansion ever, we can expect, I don't know, at least five civilizations to be released with it, but we don't know yet, it's still a mystery. And regarding campaign, we already know at least one, we don't know if it's gonna be more than that, but we know that the Abbasid campaign is going to be included in this expansion. Now the only civilization we have confirmed that is going to be in this expansion pack is the Japanese, and in this video I want to focus on them. Now this was the first image released Released and came through an age inside their email and shows what to seem, seems to be the Japanese civilization. And the first thing I noticed when I saw this picture was the pink trees. I'm sorry, but it was the pink trees and the pink flowers everywhere. I can imagine it's gonna be like a new biome, uh, something like a, a middle or a Japanese cherry trees paradise. I don't know, but I'm excited about this. Looks gorgeous. So let's start by splitting this image in three sections so we can take a look more into details in, in each of these sections. So we can see here in the first one some stone walls and on top of the walls we can see archers. They are carrying this black and white pattern bows. Now the first archery style, the Henry Ryu, was founded by Kiyomitsu in the 12th century. And in Japan they used these huge bows, almost 2 meters long bows since the 3rd century BC. And their bows or yumi were actually asymmetrical, which is pretty interesting. The upper part of the bow was longer. And that's something, if we pay attention here, we can see that this bow being carried by this archer here. These archers, there are many of them. And you can see that their whole position is a bit downwards in, in the, on the bow. Mounted archery was also extremely common. So I wonder if we are gonna see some new ranged cavalry too, I hope so. We can also see a keep behind the walls, there's a big building over here that looks like a town center, you can even see the sheep here nearby. They actually look like dojos. And look at these cute little bonsai trees. Oh. This is so beautiful. And behind the TC here we can see some armored lancer type of thing, unit carrying some shields. Interestingly though is that Japanese shields were actually square shaped, like the Tata and the Tadata. Now we can see also some villagers mining gold next to a mining camp, but this mining camp it looks larger than usual. And there is even something burning here, you can see the fire. This, I mean this also looks like a blacksmith. And 
and it could be a double purpose building a new one but we don't know uh, maybe not maybe yes we can see the cute female villagers wearing a simple farmer kimonos and a head scarf probably a tenugui and the male villager is wearing a kasa hat i would even say it looks like a bamboo jingasa hat okay and above them there are some foot soldiers carrying some type of lances and spears however they are armored like samurai and these long weapons might just be some placeholders they actually look like night lances so i don't think that is gonna stay there and right beneath the villagers mining we can see some light cavalry units these guys are riding this super cool black horses they look super cool look at this wearing some samurai armor and they're carrying spears but these units are also wearing some banners if you can see and you heard it right they are wearing it they are not carrying it you can see if you look closely you can see that their hands are in the front right one's on the horse and the other one carrying the weapon these banners this Displaying the clan's emblems and symbols were called sashimono and they were worn by soldiers under a daimyo in feudal Japan. And these sashimono poles were sewed together or just attached to their breast plates on the back. Now these bannermen or banner carrying warriors were mostly common during uh, between 15th and 17th century so probably this picture is representing either castle or imperial age. Now this little symbol here that this this little guy here is carrying it looks like the Hosokawa one, Hosokawa clan, which interestingly is still existed to today. And the current head of the family, Morihiro Hosokawa, actually served as a minister of Japan. I'm not saying that this is representing this clan, however, I'm just saying that it resembles to it, and they maybe were inspired by this um, emblem of the real clan, which is pretty cool now there is some speculation that this unit could possibly the banner guys that it could be some kind of transitioning unit that you can simply switch yourself between foot and mounted unit or ranged and melee unit i think that's a little bit too far because we do see quite different types of them um but you know it's just it's it's just too much um microing and um i don't know i just don't think that's the case but it could be that's what people have been speculating i just feel like they, they all look like they are wearing the samurai armor and just because a samurai can ride a horse shoot an arrow and use a sword doesn't mean we get a unit that does all three right so maybe we get different ones maybe we can produce them ourselves maybe we get them uh, from landmarks or from something else from the mechanic of the civilization we don't know but yeah i guess we have to wait and see good so on the left corner there are also some units that look like scouts and that makes sense because we can see there's a sheep there following them so yeah that's a scout and on the upper right side we can see what seems to be a trader chilling. It might be a trader, right? Or um, some type of caravan. And also some more foot units that seem to be samurai and spearmen. One interesting thing we can notice in this picture is that there are farms near the houses and even some villagers gathering from them. It could be aesthetics, um, but it also could be the fact that houses now from them, it's gonna act like mills. And because we also can't see, I can't see a mill in this picture. I don't know if they're hiding it, if it's just for the hype, you know, but um, yeah. It could be that the houses are acting as mills and the villagers are dropping resources um, from the farms in the houses. And I can see here also, just like the Chinese, you can see that their farms are in the water, which is pretty cool, representing the typical wet rice farms, right? Super cool. And what else? We can also see a landmark here. And this landmark is displayed on the game's team page as the floating gate. But we are gonna check that picture separately um, in details later. Now for the bottom area, we can see more houses, we can see a cute little sand garden with a little thingy here, blue thingy here. Maybe it's just decoration. And then we can see this big building here surrounded by farms. Now this could be some type of granary like the Chinese have or it could be a landmark as some people suggested. Um, it does look fairly simple and humble to be a landmark but maybe it is. Maybe it grants some area bonus to farms and gathering around it. And on the bottom we can see some 
unarmored cavalry as well. It, that, they look like horsemen, right? I think these are the horsemen units. And um, But what I see here is, again, with the round shields. Ugh. There's also a lonely warrior on the right here that looks different from the others. Some have speculated that could be like a militia type of unit. Um, like the Russ militia, you know, that you accumulate like some points throughout the game. You can just use these points to spam or to just pawn these units in your TC. But they could also be produced from a certain landmark. Or could be just another unit from barracks. And the speculation so far is that it could be Onamusha units, which were a female warrior that fought alongside the samurai. I, that, that's a speculation for now, we are not sure, we don't know the name of the unit. And the last part, we see some more samurai running around, we see those warriors carrying banners again, but this time on foot. So there you go, that's why the speculation of you can just switch between the modes. And in this section we can also see two markets over here. There's a big structure that could be the university, another mining camp slash blacksmith slash something near the stone mine and some depleted mine. We can see here the barracks, the stables, the archery range and to the left there is a big pagoda and that I think it's a landmark. That's imposing enough to be said it is a landmark. And I think, I'm not sure because I don't have the landmark name to get some tips or the description, I have nothing, but I think it could be the Nikko Toshugu Shrine located in Nikko, north of Tokyo. This place is dedicated to Tokugawa Ieyasu, the founder of the Tokugawa Shogunate. And it would make a lot of sense if this was a landmark to transition to the Imperial Age. But we can only confirm this once we have our hands on the game. I can only assume. And behind this landmark we see a building that could be the monastery. Or a shrine, you know, a shrine with a Tori gate and everything. Perfect, then we have the images released on Steam page, because that first one was sent per email to insiders, right? And this one is on Steam. I'm gonna leave the link to the Steam page below for this expansion if you're interested in checking it out. It looks gorgeous, so I really recommend. Let's see what this image tells us. So now again we can see those female units on the right, right? They are carrying this Najinata, which makes even more sense to say that these are Onamusha, but yeah, we'll see. And the cool thing about this Najinata, this long weapon, you know, could compensate, could help them as women to compensate for the strength and body size advantage of their male opponents. So yeah, it was more efficient for them so they, because they can't compete on strength. We can also see a few houses and they do look simpler than the previous pictures. So I think this of course is showing an earlier period or earlier age than the previous picture, probably feudal age since um, we can also see some horsemen in the market in the background. We can also see some spearmen, some barracks, an archery range. And behind this cherry tree we can see the town center and some villagers gathering food from the sheep right next to it. See it? And again the houses with the farms next to them. And of course again we see this big granary construction building with farms around it. And if you look closely, this building looks the same as the previous picture, unlike the other buildings, right? We have seen all the production buildings and everything. We can see that they changed from the first picture to the second, but this one doesn't, which would make sense to say that it's a landmark, because landmarks don't change throughout the ages. That's one of the reasons people are speculating that this is a landmark. Now, the next picture shows us a new unit. So this guy here, dressed in black with a... It's a small sword, right, that he's carrying. The description given with this picture states Disguised as enemy villagers, sabotage your opponent's buildings with the shinobi, then disappear with the use of a smoke bomb, spread chaos across your opponent's empire with the new Japanese civilization coming in the South of the Sand expansion for Age of Bias 4. So, this shinobi unit is definitely some type of ninja. I don't know for sure how this disguise mechanism is gonna work. Um, I wonder if towers, for example, and TCs are gonna be able to just expose you, you know, expose the shinobi instead of showing up your villager, uh, like as your villager. I feel like they would be able to recognize and expose it, but I don't know. Um, but even more than that, if I see one of my villagers just wandering about and going from one weird place to another weird 
third place. I don't know how easily I would be fooled, you know? And if I can put my mouse on top of it, for if I am fooled, if I think it's my villagers just going wild, if I put my mouse on, on top of it to um, select or something, am I gonna see like the symbol to attack, you know, with a little sword on it? I don't know. I really don't know how, um, how this is going to be used or how it's going to work. So it's hard to predict. Anyway, it also says that you can sabotage your opponent's buildings. Now, this could mean so many things. It could mean that you're blocking production for a certain period of time, that you're just decreasing the production for a certain percentage, making it slower. Or, I don't know, for example, if you sabotage a mining camp, it cannot get resources. There are so many ways you can sabotage buildings and economic buildings and military buildings that it's hard for me to speculate exactly what it could be um, I think you're gonna cause some type of damage uh, maybe you even damage the building itself it has to be so nicely balanced because it could either be useless or too OP right as we say too good so it, the damage is too great or it's too useless then you know we are either going to see these units being used too much and it's gonna hurt the game or not used at all so it has to be you know the perfect spot there to be enough worthy enough to make produce these units and go through the whole pain of microing your unit there doing something to your enemy's building and and probably then dying losing the unit afterwards uh but it has to be worth it right it feels like it's a kamikaze mission to me it feels like you're going there to to die but anyway it has to be worth it okay and the final information here is the use of smoke bomb to disappear this could be a mechanic similar to the Muzofad invisibility ability you know that you activate and you're invisible but towers and tc can still identify you can uh, expose you or something like uh, teleportation in radio or something you know because like uh, league of legends like on dota you have this type of teleportation or uh, with the the spawns or Assassin's Creed style, you know, it just creates this fog on top of the map that the, the enemy cannot see and you can just escape. I don't know how it's gonna be with teleport, with the real big smoke bomb or just with invisibility. We are gonna see. But I feel like the mechanics for invisibility is very similar to the disguise one. It's still detectable. I don't think they would repeat themselves, but it's still a possibility. But anyway, behind these units here, we also see a different building. Look at it. Hmm. And it's not a TC, it's not any other production building because we already have seen those already. So, there's a landmark, hmm. Maybe that's where you can make this unit, you know? Or maybe it's just an additional production building from Japanese, like you can make ninja dojos or something like that specifically for this unit. Yeah, maybe it can also produce ninjas and something we haven't even seen yet. We don't know. And finally, the final... Im and finally, the final, <laughs> and finally, the last image released on the Japanese civilizations, this close up of the floating gate landmark. And I mentioned this landmark earlier when we were checking the first picture together. In the description though, they only say that it grants the ability to train Shinto priests. I believe this Shinto priest that we can see here on the, on the screenshot, I believe they refer to the Kanushi or the Shinshoku priests, you know, but, but they take care of the shrine in Japan. Um, at least that's what the, the unit looks like with the long white tunic, uh, the Karijinu, the special hat which is called Kamuri and also the scepter. They are carrying this wooden scepter flat. You know, it's a flat scepter. I think it's called Hu. There are two main religions practiced in Japan. It was Buddhism and Shinto. And Shinto is a religion originated from Japan, focused on nature and um, natural divinities, you know, and entities. And these supernatural entities were, ca were called Kami. Now imagine if we could conjure this Kami, like the spirit of a lion to fight alongside us in battle. Nah, I don't think they're going this far, but that's a cute idea right there, isn't it? But anyway, maybe these priests have some different types of bonus. Maybe they can heal in an area and, and maybe they can carry relics, uh, pick relics earlier 
I don't know. Maybe they are able to do mass conversion. Maybe they are faster, stronger, debuff. I don't know. There must be um, something special about this, these priests, right? If you can make them from the landmark. I suppose you can also make them from the monasteries or, or the shrines that you also can build. So I expect there's something else to it. Otherwise, it doesn't feel like a very useful landmark just, you know, to make more priests if you can already make priests from somewhere else. Nonetheless, this landmark seems to be based on the Tori Gate of the Itsukushima Shrine. And this complex is listed in the UNESCO World Heritage Site as one of Japan's most popular touristic destinations, attractions. So it's really famous. And when I saw it, when I saw this picture, I was immediately like, oh my god, they did it. It is this one. It is Itsukushima. And it's beautiful in both real life and the landmark. There's one little thing more that I want you guys to pay attention to though. There are three little wooden boxes behind the priest and I wonder what they are. Maybe some new type of relic. Maybe more of those can be found and collected. Maybe it's something we are gonna be able to produce. What if it offers some type of new resource? I don't know. There are so many possibilities, but I don't think they're just there. I don't think they're just like decoration. But anyway, I think that's it. Those are the images released. What do you think about it? Let me know in the comments. Are you excited for the new expansion? What do you think about so far of the Japanese? Are you excited to play with it? I certainly am. So if you have any other ideas, any other speculations, you know, for the units, for the buildings, please let me know in the comments. I would love to hear ideas, what you think it's gonna be what's how do you think things are gonna work thank you so much for watching and leave a like if you like this video leave your comment again don't forget about it let me know what you think please consider subscribing to the channel to support me and for more aoe4 content and i'll see you guys in the next one bye